Up next, gruntiest utes for towing big heavy stuff across this wide brown land that we know as Australia. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australia new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. Let us lube up right now and do this. 4x4 dual cab ute for a three ton caravan. Looking at 550 Amarok or V6 X class, I know you advise to keep clear of VW and Mercedes, but they are the only ones with 550 Newton meters. I currently tow with a 2012 BT50, does the job, but I would like more performance and comfort. Three tons is pretty heavy. You know, the transverse cross section through a three ton caravan is going to be big too. So aerodynamic drag at highway speeds will skyrocket. And on the open road, aerodynamic drag is about half of the total resistance that the powertrain battles against. That's when you're not towing. So this is going to be a significant upgrade there. Plus, you've got more tyres on the road, and that's going to be, I don't know, maybe double the rolling resistance. And then there's gravity, because Isaac Newton. A three-ton van is one and a half times ballpark, the weight of the vehicle, so hills are going to be a challenge. It's like running uphill carrying Rebel Wilson. There's no universe where this occurs effortlessly. It's just not going to happen, right? If you tow three tons, performance will take a big hit. I actually think the best ute you can buy for loaded performance, you know, serious heavy towing off-road work with a load in the back, that stuff, is the BT50. When you consider performance value and support, it's a pretty hard ute to beat. A big misconception among the towing fraternity is that torque is all that matters, and it's just not. This is a classic failure to understand basic physics. Torque is a building block of power, and power is what makes vehicles perform. It's the only thing that matters. And I don't mean peak power, which is quoted in the brochure. I mean the power delivery at all driving revs. The peak torque figures just give you a hint about the power delivery at lower revs. Diesels make a lot of torque at low revs, right? And power equals torque times revs, if you get the units right. Diesels make a lot of low RPM power, which makes them great for towing. Because you don't have to rev their tits off to deliver a decent amount of power to get the job done and overcome some obstacle. The 3.2 diesel in the BT50 makes a maximum torque figure of 470 Newton meters from 1750 to 2500 revs. But 470 Newton metres at 1750 is just not the same thing as 470 at 2,500. It's 86 kilowatts at 1750 and 123 kilowatts at 2,500. So performance is going to be significantly better at 2,500 compared with 1750, even though the torque is the same. Let's say that you're on a particular hill at a particular speed and you can be in fourth gear at 1750 or third at 2,500. Go for third if you want the additional performance because that's where the power is. Peak power, 147 kilowatts at 3,000. The performance is going to be even better again at 3,000 because the power is greater even though the torque is actually less. So on the same hill, at the same speed, second gear at 3,000 is the winner. Some of you in the comments I know are going to tell me that peak acceleration in any gear occurs at peak torque, and that is true but it is the world's dodgiest criterion upon which to make decisions about what gear to be in because your car has multiple gears. So whatever speed you're at, at any instant in time, on any hill, changing back to a gear that delivers more power is going to deliver more performance. It's that simple. Engines at peak power equal maximum possible acceleration at any speed. Hashtag physics. So the gear that you choose really matters. The other point that's important is that these peak numbers only occur at wide open throttle. So just having the TACO on 3000 and the BT, it's just not going to be enough, right? You won't be getting that 147 kilowatts and therefore the vehicle's maximum capability to overcome resistance at that speed unless the accelerator is pinned to the floor. You have to be in the right gear with the needle on 3000, right foot nailed to the floor, and then 
If you are maintaining revs, you have sufficient power to get the job done. And if not, you'll have to let the speed drop and choose a lower gear at 3000. And if you're accelerating in these conditions, you have more than adequate power to get the job done. I'd suggest that the BT-50 has a very tractable engine because the power delivery at wide open throttle is quite linear from below 1750 up to just above 3000. If you've frequently got the throttle pinned and the taco on 3000 and the performance towing the van at that time is subjectively inadequate, maybe that is a reason to consider an upgrade. But if you don't, right, you don't need an upgrade for more power, you just need to change how you drive. Change to a lower gear that delivers 3000 or whatever the peak is for your car and get your right foot more engaged because that's where peak performance lives. Let's talk about upgrading. Right, The X-Class has a decent engine with very linear power delivery from 1400 to 3200 revs. Compared with the BT-50, it'll offer you 20 to 25% more performance across the same sort of rev range with the throttle nailed. And you are definitely going to pay for that. It's going to cost you 75 grand plus on road costs and more like 100 grand if you play options bingo. Unfortunately, like the Nissan Navara from which it is cloned, the X-Class has a coil-sprung multi-link rear suspension that's poor at heavy towing or loaded dynamic performance generally because it's designed mainly to appease rich wankers who never carry heavy stuff. So you'll get more grunt, but ride and handling will likely go backwards when you are towing and you definitely don't want that. Mercedes-Benz product support is also terrible. X-Class is an overpriced diagnostic test, principally to detect rich people with CPMD, compulsive public masturbation disorder. It's a terrible affliction, and the rich are very susceptible. Mercedes-Benz is at the forefront of innovation here. Only they could rebadge a Nissan and use it for research in this way. Look, for that sort of coin, I'd be buying a Toyota Land Cruiser instead on every day ending in Y. That thing is a towing powerhouse and far more comfortable and probably a lot cheaper, spec for spec. The V6 Amarok is 12 grand less and you will get a leaf sprung rear end, which is ideal for heavy towing. But Volkswagen reliability remains uh, shit and support is among the worst in the car industry. And the engine is a joke. Here's why. You'll get 165 kilowatts maximum. That's 12% more peak power than the BT. But you have to rev it to 4,500 to get it there. And that is undignified. Diesel engines do not enjoy 4,500 revs. And you will not enjoy driving it there. It's difficult to do. And I just downloaded the latest Amarok brochure, which you might do if you're in the market. And they claim... 550 newton metres from 1,500 to 2,500 revs, which is believable. Unfortunately, they also claim 165 kilowatts from 2,500 to 4,500, and that's just bullshit. It is total bullshit, as in it is a barefaced lie about the performance of that engine. And by lie, I mean it is a false claim about what is physically possible subject to that torque specification being correct, as any first-year engineering student could confirm. 550 newton metres at 2,500 equals 144 kilowatts because that's how the Newtonian universe rolls. It's certainly not the 165 kilowatts that Volkswagen claims at those revs, and you can't have both. Engine performance is so critical to the vehicle purchasing decision and not everyone is technically literate. So in my view, this is deceptive and misleading conduct from them again. And okay, it could be an honest error, but we are discussing the global leader in deceptive and misleading conduct when it comes to engines. So there's that. In any case, do not be sucked in by the specs. They're wrong. If there's just one message that you manage to take away from this report, let it be this. Unless you are currently extracting the maximum performance from your vehicle, just drive differently. Change back a couple of gears. This is the easiest and cheapest way to derive 
additional towing performance. Exploit peak power more often if necessary because upgrading is going to be expensive and you probably don't need to do that because there are very few 3-ton towing problems that cannot be adequately addressed with 147 kilowatts at 3000 revs. And upgrading, if that's the right word, to a Volkswagen or a CPMD detector could easily prove to be a major downgrade in support, especially in remote areas. These two brands have grunty utes, certainly, but they are specialists at treating consumer law as if it is optional and treating you like you simply don't matter right from the instant that they cash your check. 